All right, folks, I wanted to tell you a little bit about David Ropey. David Ropey is a multimedia installation artist uh, who was born in 1960 in Canada. He works with sound, video, and the human body. He's extremely well regarded in the field uh, for his working with both uh, the body in space and technology at the same time. He studied experimental art initially at Ontario College of Art. He's exhibited at the Venice Biennale in Ars Electronica, where he's won multiple pre-Ars awards, which is uh, one of the most prestigious awards in electronic media art. And there's his uh, website for you. So he, he made a name for himself with this thing called the Very Nervous System. And I'm going to play you a little clip of this here. And uh, this is from 1991, so it, it's quite impressive technically that he was able to use this. He's using a camera to measure the motions of his body and then translating those into sounds. So you can see he's mapping different gestures to different sequences in the sound. Um, there, there's uh, different parts of the body mapped to different uh, aspects of the sound as well. Uh, the overall motion controls the overall vibrance of, of the composition too. It's a bit uh, rudimentary, uh, but again, it's from quite a while ago. Since then, he's continued working in this way, and we'll see at the end of the presentation some more works that use this idea uh, of tracking the body to, to implement sound in an exhibition space um, in a bit more eloquent way. The impressive thing, again, to me is that, like he's not wearing anything, right? He doesn't have a mocap suit on. There's not dots all over him or sensors that he's holding in his hands. Um, it's just with the use of a camera that he can do this. Uh, so <clears throat> almost all of his, his works involve camera input in some way. So in Giver of Names, uh, there's a pedestal here and a collection of like plastic toys and, and odds and ends here. And you can put objects on the pedestal. A uh, camera above the pedestal will detect the objects there and then it will... Um, kind of quasi randomly generate a name for this combination of objects that you have selected. So he's mixing um, computer vision with some algorithmic uh, text generation. This one is pretty cool. Uh, Steamingmedia.org was a collaboration he did, he did with uh, Tapio Michaela. They made these two um, interconnected saunas. They're connected over the internet not in physical space. There is a virtual window in each that shows the inside of the other sauna. Um, and you can communicate then from one sauna to the other through these virtual windows, no, not through like chatting or anything. Um, So the, the interesting thing about the display, and you can see the display here on the right, um, if you're still in the sauna, the display starts to blur, right? As if it was foggy, right? So a sauna is a steam bath experience. Um, and, and like, so glass would normally be very foggy in a sauna. So if you are still, it, the, it blurs to appear foggy. Um, but if you're moving, it becomes clear as though you're wiping off the glass, right? If you're wiping the condensation off the glass. So motion 
becomes clear and you can see what's going on, but then stillness blurs away into the background. Uh, Sorting Demon, he did it in 2003. There was a camera outside the gallery. You would see this piece then um, inside. The camera outside the gallery takes photos. It automatically um, crops the, the photo to try to find people and then it adds people to this uh, collage, right? So this is very clearly about um, surveillance and uh, the quantity of uh, like societal and government surveillance is happening in our lives. Um, I'm sure everyone has seen the uh, like police cameras on traffic lights now. Uh, so he's, he's trying to make an art piece that gets us to think that about that perhaps a bit more critically. This is interesting too, to me, because you can see it's, it's sort of like not only sorting, um, you know, the, the people out of the images, but then it's, it's also like grouping things by colors of the rainbow. All right. And so in 2008, he did watch. This is very similar to the sauna piece uh, where there's uh, two, uh, a camera looking at the, the street here in two different views of it. They're actually mirrors, right? It's the same intersection, but flipped. Uh, and you can even see the same cars here, right? Um, but they're, they're, they look very different, right? But we can tell by the cars, it's actually the same time. So what's going on? Uh, in the one on the left, he is like the sauna, things that are moving are in focus, but things that are still get blurred. And then on the right, um, it just switched, sorry. <laughs> um, the, the obverse is that things that are moving get blurred and things that are still become clear, right? And it, it goes back and forth between these two states. Uh, okay, Plot Against Time, number three, 2010, um, shows trails of bugs in the sky over time. It starts out kind of tame, but then uh, as time progresses, the, the bug trails sort of overtake the, the image. Um, he, he's prolific in the, the quantity of work and projects that he does. I'm only showing you a small sample, which sort of shows like his mastery of the tools and techniques he's using to do these things. Once you have that mastery, you can barely quickly make uh, works like this. Uh, similarly, Murmurscape uh, is looking at photos of Montreal and then um, letter cutouts that blend the photos together. So you're getting uh, the, the image of Montreal filtered through uh, colored text. And so you can kind of see the shape of some, some buildings, some cars, uh, but it's a little disjointed because of the, the text letters that we're seeing through. Okay, so then uh, Dark Matter he did in 2010, and this is a return to, to the, the very nervous system uh, idea. It tracks your position and your speed in space. And there's an invisible sculpture in the room with you that you cannot see. The, the room is dark, so it's shot with an infrared camera here. Uh, but you might bump into it. And depending on how quickly you bump into it and where you bump into it may reveal some of the virtual materiality of it through the sounds that it makes. And so a, a quick forceful gesture will produce a different sound than a light or delicate gesture, right? It's fascinating to me because it, it asks this question, like, can you determine the materiality of something through sound alone, right? There's no texture. There's no physical weight.
but we have all these other clues about its materiality. So the last piece I'll show you from Dave Rookby is handheld in 2012. Oops. Uh, this is similar to, to dark matter, except he's looking specifically at hands. And instead of having a completely empty space here, the neat thing is that he's projecting um, other hands onto your hands. So your hands, when you place them out in front of you, become a screen. The camera vision system detects that it's your hands and not your, your head or your feet or something else. And then it will project other hands onto your hands, right? So this is kind of like an ephemeral virtual uh, way to hold hands with another person. So these are uh, just a few of the works by David Rokeby, who is at the forefront of, of using computer vision in the arts and engaging with people in a physical embodied way in interactive installations.